In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve equations with variable exponents like this, 2 to the a equals 8, as well as introduce the concept of the square root. These two things are very closely related, so that'll make sense soon. So 2 to the a equals 8. We actually did touch on this very example earlier, but I'm not sure what it is if I didn't already know. <laughs> so let's figure it out. 2 times 2 is 4, so it can't be to the power of 2, times 2 equals 8. Ah, so we count up. We have 1, 2, 3. That's pretty straightforward. A equals 3, so 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. I'm going to use the exact same process for these uh, questions, examples. They say solve for u. 10 to the power of u equals 100. What is u? Well, I'm going to start trying. 10 times 10, hey, that already equals 100. So obviously, in this example, the u is simply 1, 2. So 10 to the power of 2, so I'm going to write in there, 2, oops, I've somehow gone, oh, I'm in there. 10 to the power of 2. 10 to the power of 2 is what equals 100. Down here is a bit bigger. I have a feeling, though, and this might be helpful later, that there's only one more zero here. And I know that every time I time every time I times or multiply by 10, I get another zero. So I bet this one's going to be 10 to the power of 3. Let's see. 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000. So as I expected, this is only 1, 2, 3. And that's simple enough, I think. So this one looks a bit scarier because it's so big. Um, but it's asking the same thing. Solve for v, 10 to the power of v equals 100 million. So I'm going to get you to think back to the examples we just looked at. I noticed that 10 to the power of 2 has two zeros. 10 to the power of 3, we end up with three zeros. So I bet this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I bet it's going to be 10 to the power of 8. So there's a couple ways I could check this. I'm just going to use my calculator. I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to plug it into my calculator. I'm going to go 10 y to the x button and then to the power of 8. I could just go 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Is that 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 10. But the fact that it's 8 times I might get confused. So I find this to be the safer bet. Let me check. And yes, as I predicted, 10 to the power of 8 is 100 million. So that was pretty, pretty straightforward. You just have to find these kind of patterns, right? Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to focus on square roots. So it, this is the little square root sign here. Be careful. It looks a little like the long division symbol we use, but you'll notice it has the sticky out bit here. That makes it a square root sign. In math, a square root of a number x so the square root of 49, which we see in our example, what is the square root of 49, is a number y, so that would be 7 actually, that y squared equals x. So 7 squared, or 7 to the 2, or you can always remember, think of that as 7 times 7, equals 49. So the square root of 49 is 7. In other words, a number y... 7, whose square, the result of multiplying the number by itself, or y, is x. So 7 squared is 49, 7 times 7 is 49, therefore the square root of 49 is 7. So there's a lot of these perfect squares. Here are some examples of some perfect squares and square roots you're probably familiar with because they're the easiest ones to learn for multiplication for some reason. 2 times 2 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9, therefore the square of 9 is 3. Or sorry, the square root. 4 squared is 16, the square root of 16 is 4. And it goes on. We just talked about 7 squared is 49, therefore the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 100 is 10. Now these ones, I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe this one, some of you probably know your 12 times 12 is 144. I never learned that, but well, I learned it, but I never memorized it. Um, 
there's a button on our calculator that we can use to find square roots. So this one was pretty straightforward. I hope a lot of you knew off the top of your head. Hopefully you're familiar with the multiplication that, hey, I know seven times seven equals 49. Therefore, the square root of 49 is seven. That one I'm hoping popped into your head. The last thing I wanna mention before we move on, um, because this might be useful in the next section of your learning or a later section about circles, uh, they're kind of inverse operations. So you know how we talk about adding is the opposite of subtracting, multiplying is the opposite of dividing. So square, having a number squared and finding the square root, those are kind of opposite operations. So when we are solving using the algebraic uh, process, later on you might find that you have a number like seven squared and we're gonna need to do this, the, the square root sign to it to both sides of our equation in order to solve for the variable. It'll make more sense later, but just be a, familiar that these two operations are connected and opposite to each other. So this example says, what is the square root of 196? I don't know off the top of my head. I can't use my multiplication chart right now unless I had one of those giant ones to find out what times what equals 196. So that's when I'm gonna go to my calculator. Uh, there's a button on there that looks like this. The fact that it has a little two suggests to us that we're timesing two numbers, a number times itself to get 196. So I just typed in this, then 196, and it told me that my answer was 14. It said the square root of 196 is 14. I can test that and check it just by going 14 times 14. That's easy enough, 14 times 14. Did that on my calculator, and it says the answer is 196, so that is correct. Something to keep in mind is when it says square root, a perfect square, it's two numbers where it's times itself, it's literally talking about this idea of a square as well. That wasn't the most beautiful square, but this one we can say is 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters. So when we talk about the area, we already know, if you remember area, base times height, the area of it's gonna be 196 centimeters squared. We're picturing squares. This example says, what is the square root of 169? Again, I don't know that one off the top of my head, so I'm just gonna go right to my calculator. I type this button in first, then I write 169, and my calculator says 13. So I'm gonna check that, because I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head, but I guess it makes sense, because we know that 12 times 12 is 144, so it should be just a little bit bigger than that, it should be, so 13 would be, yeah, and it says 13 times 13 equals mm -hmm. 169. This last example is actually the easiest, but it'll sort of mess a lot of kids up because sometimes the easiest ones are confusing. So what is the square root of zero? I don't even need to use my calculator for this, and I'm hoping you don't once I explain to you. You have to ask yourself, what times itself, or what times what equals zero? Really, zero times anything, but which one to be itself? Zero times zero equals zero. So the square root of zero is zero. That's it. Okay, good luck for this section.